Each of these stars of My 600 Pound Life have either died during or after the filming of the show, and in the third and final part of this series of my channel, we're looking at the last six stars who have lost their lives, starting with Gina Crassley, who actually didn't need Doctor Now to complete a massive transformation. We first meet Gina in season eight of the show in 2020, where she weighed a staggering 606 pounds. Her weight and approach to self-care started to put a lot of strain on her home life, with her mother and her wife having to beg Gina to take a monthly bath. Her problems seemed to stem from when she was just a child, with Gina admitting that her childhood was extremely tough, with her explaining that her father would physically and emotionally abuse her, going as far as to punch her in the face. She claims her sister got all of the attention from her parents during her childhood, and this led to intense feelings of jealousy towards her. This in turn led Gina to find other ways to comfort herself, and the answer in her eyes would be food. She explains that at pretty much every opportunity she would eat in order to feel better, and by the time she was 10 years old, she was already 150 pounds. Her mother, who she's still around quite a lot, has revealed that she feels like she failed as a mother. If Gina threw a tantrum because she wanted food, instead of fighting her on this, she just gave in and gave her the food. This is something that has affected Gina all the way into her adult life as we'll see later the way she treats her wife on things as simple as ordering food. Gina's weight started to spiral out of control as she was trapped in a vicious cycle of being bullied at school, which led her to being more troublesome at home. This in turn led to more abuse, which led to more eating. As she got older and left home, the abuse stopped, but the eating didn't, and this has led her to become fully dependent on her wife and family to bring her food, as she can barely leave the comfort of her armchair. The worst part about Gina's situation is that her whole family is massively overweight and it seems like they all enable the behaviour of each other. After Gina's wife Beth finished a long shift at work, the overweight family huddled around the phone as Gina called Beth to ask what she was going to do for food, despite four people being there and fully able to cook. However, they tell Beth to collect fast food and after Beth says no, this is how Gina and the family responds. Can you go to the diner and pick up us some food? No, we have food at home. I can cook all home. You're not going to cook this late. I can. What's the big freaking deal? I don't get it. Just go. Wait, well, you gotta call the no, you're going to call because I... You have to call. Evidently, something needed to change, as Gina's life is genuinely in danger to her massive weight, and something did change. She eventually set up a meeting with Dr. Now in the St. Joseph Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Gina and Dr. Now had multiple meetings throughout the year that she was on the program, which is ample time to lose hundreds of pounds if you stick to a weight loss program. When she started the program, she was 606 pounds, and by the end of the year, she was ready to start her weight loss surgery. However, in a shocking moment, Moment after Dr. Now weighed Gina at 550 pounds, 50 pounds over her weight loss goal, he made a very tough but necessary decision. So I'm canceling your surgery and we're not moving ahead with that today. Gina was off and on Dr. Now's program, but being eventually kicked off the surgery wait list may have been a blessing in disguise, as Gina shared to her personal TikTok page that she was 100 pounds down. From 2020 to 2021, Gina posted multiple TikToks of her enjoying life Life and sharing her dancing videos, seemingly having a lot more mobility than she had when she was on the show. However, this wouldn't last long. In 2021, she announced that she'd got to £379, but around the same time, her cellulitis had become extremely painful and started to spread, bringing on neurological issues too. And in August of 2021, just a few months after the weight loss announcement, her sister told the world that Gina had tragically died to a mysterious condition. I'm Gina's older sister, Ali, and unfortunately, Gina has passed away. The next star started in a similar position as Gina, but was actually successful in Dr. Now's program. Laura Ann Perez is a native of San Antonio in Texas and started her weight loss journey in excess of 600 pounds. She's not quite bedbound, however does rely on her husband to bring her food and help her live her life, which includes lugging around the oxygen tanks which help keep her from choking. When her husband brings her food, it's usually in the form of sweets and chocolate, which she usually has massive amounts of. She has a self-proclaimed sweet tooth and would rather eat sweet and unhealthy foods, which are obviously much higher in calories when compared to whole food meals. Laura breaks down at one point and says she wants to have a future and a life, including 
considering having a job and providing for her family, but she's worried she's going to die very soon. Before seeing Dr. Now, she claims that multiple other doctors failed to help her, so this was her final resort. She was surprisingly open with Dr. Now, admitting straight away that she knows her issue is sweets, candy, and chocolate. I'll try to find anything sweet, like candy, a lot of cake. Although the initial meeting with the doctor seems positive as they all seem quite cheerful, there's a dark undertone as Dr. Now asserted to Laura that she will die soon if something doesn't change and given she's diabetic and already can't breathe unassisted, this will be sooner rather than later. And quite unexpectedly, this talk actually worked. It seems like most of the 600 pound lifestyles I cover don't actually apply themselves to their weight loss, but Laura did and more importantly so did her husband who stopped bringing her sweets and swapped it for vegetables. Laura exercised as best as she could and ate in a caloric deficit and evidently this wasn't just for the cameras as after three months she had lost 56 pounds which pleased Dr. Now so much that he approved her for weight loss surgery. Despite some issues during her surgery which was changed last minute to a gastric sleeve due to complications and left Laura with pneumonia she powered on with her weight loss journey and lost in total a whopping 237 pounds leaving Dr. Now's office for the final time weighing 357 pounds. Her husband, Dr. Now, and of course, Laura herself were all ecstatic and extremely proud of the efforts put into losing the weight. Sadly though, this happiness wouldn't last forever as the family would soon be left heartbroken. Despite getting down to a reported 183 pounds, which is a massive achievement and one of the show's greatest success stories, in 2021, it was announced that Laura had lost her life nine years after the show aired. It's not confirmed what her cause of death was as the family didn't release it and her obituary doesn't state it. However, with her diabetes and past obesity, people have speculated that it was a result of cardiac issues. Laura was a much loved figure and people online were quick to share their pain. The comments on this Reddit thread are the complete opposite to the one about Lisa Fleming, who one Reddit commenter dubbed the worst human ever. Lisa Fleming lived a very sad existence, enlisting her daughter and her young grandson to help her do everything, such as feeding herself and cleaning up after her. YouTube commenters have pointed out the awful situation the grandson is in, stating, it's extremely sad that the grandson has to be subjected to this. This is just generational trauma developing before our eyes. Lisa's excuse for having a controversial attitude is that her father died when she was very young and that because he was on life support, she was the one that had to make the decision to turn that off. This led Lisa down a path of drinking and partying, resulting in a teenage pregnancy for herself. She said that as long as she stayed drunk, the feelings couldn't hurt her. This would end up in tragedy though, as one day during a party at her house, a fight broke out which her brother tried to stop and ended up with him being fatally shot. Lisa blamed herself, and so did her mother, which just added to the negative feelings. As Lisa carried on with her life, she steadily gained weight and became increasingly reliant on her family to provide for her. By the time we meet her in the show, in season six in 2018, Lisa weighed 700 pounds. She eventually contacted Dr. Now and made the six hour journey via ambulance to see him. And her attitude to weight loss is very compelling comparable to that of James Kings, who's featured in my previous two videos. You'd think the fact that the paramedics had to reinforce the foundations of her home just so she could leave would be enough to make a change, but Lisa did not see it that way. She was dismissive of Dr. Now's advice and screamed in pain as the doctors tried their best to help her. When Dr. Now questioned why she hadn't lost any weight, despite being given a strict diet plan, she says that she just wants a surgery and doesn't think she'd gained any weight. She even complains when she's given a 1,200 calorie diet. Despite this though, Lisa did make a good attempt at weight loss. However, a shocking revelation came about as the woman helping her lose weight questioned why she had ice cream in the house and Lisa told her it's a bribe for her boyfriend to perform sexual favours for her. After a while, it was increasingly obvious that she wasn't going to lose any weight, as she refused to give up her unhealthy lifestyle. Despite complaining daily of the pain she needed to endure, she wasn't going to stop eating and seemingly wanted an easy way out of the situation. 
Well, Dr. Na wasn't just going to give her weight loss surgery, so there wasn't an easy way out unfortunately, but she wouldn't have too much time to dwell on that fact unfortunately, as the show had barely wrapped up filming and before they could even film her Where Are They Now episode, Lisa's body unfortunately gave in to the weight and she died aged 50 in 2018. People in Reddit comments stated that while this is a very sad situation for the family, it should act as a warning to all future stars of the show, proving that when Dr. Now says he will not live without action, he's not joking. And the next patient proves that tragedies do happen, even while in the care of Dr. Now, and the heartbreaking end of Colisa's story shows this like no other. Colisa McMillan appeared in season 8 of the show and weighed around £643 at the start, although during her stay with the doctor she got it to as low as £590. Colisa had four children in her 20s and unfortunately had an extremely difficult life during this time as her husband was abusive towards her. Like most of the stars in the show, she ate to comfort herself and ended up weighing nearly £400 by the time she was 24. Eventually, when she was 30 years old and £500, he got arrested and she moved the family to Louisiana. However, the comfort eating followed with her. The true effects of this comfort eating wouldn't show up until she was 39 when she had a major heart attack, which actually caused her heart to stop beating completely. Given the fact she was £500, Colisa was far too big to operate on, so they weren't able to perform the corrective surgery to fix the damage caused by the heart attack. Colisa herself called her heart a ticking time bomb, which was unfortunately foreshadowing a tragic future. Now 40 years old in 2020, she seeked the help of Dr. Now to finally change her life around, using the love for her four daughters as fuel to power her weight loss journey. She initially showed a good work ethic, losing £144 during her stay. Dr. Now finally approved her for bariatric surgery, which presumably filled the family with hope for the future that she will finally shift the weight. However, almost immediately after the surgery, issues started to crop up. A suture, or a stitch, popped internally for Kalisa and she hemorrhaged, which is incredibly dangerous internal bleeding. However, Dr. Now did emergency surgery to fix this issue quickly. Apparently after the surgery though, she never really recovered and spent months in hospital on a ventilator where more issues would arise. Apparently the show doesn't follow the correct events, but a Facebook post shared by her niece may give us a better idea on what happened to Kalisa. She spent one and a half months on a ventilator in ICU in Houston. She was partially paralyzed from that point. She developed a nasty bed sore and a UTI. She was afraid of going to the doctor due to COVID. Eventually, she went to the ER where they found she was septic and her kidneys were failing. Her condition worsened and antibiotics were not effective. Within a week of her being in ICU, she passed. Reddit commenters were quick to share their feelings, with one saying, I am heartbroken. I wanted so badly for her to succeed, especially considering her horrible, horrible backstory. Kelly Mason also had a troubled background and suffered one of the most humiliating and dangerous scenes on the show when she was physically stuck in the car on the way home from the hospital. When Kelly started the show, she was £700 and appeared in season 7, which aired in 2019. Growing up, she lived with her grandparents due to an absent mother and a father who had another family. However, after watching her grandfather die in front of her due to a heart attack, her mother was forced to look after Kelly. Her mother Mother, having not much experience raising a child, allowed Kelly to binge on fast food and lead an unhealthy life, which meant her weight skyrocketed. Living in North Carolina at the start of the show, she said that every single step she takes is torture, and it's getting worse by the day. Despite this, she can't knock the addiction that she has to food. When Kelly first meets Dr. Now on the show, he lists every health problem affecting her, which leaves you thinking why she hadn't sought help earlier. Diabetes, blood clots, high blood pressure, arthritis, thyroid issues, and on top of this, a recent hospital visit due to heart failure. Upon leaving this hospital visit is where the infamous taxi scene occurs, where Kelly seemingly gets stuck after falling forward in the car, leading to a team of medical workers and firefighters having to fight to get her out. Dr. Now showed his caring side with this incident as he tried to calm Kelly down as she was at serious risk of another cardiac arrest. Eventually, the team successfully got Kelly 
Kelly out of the van. During her time on the show, Kelly lost around 100 pounds. However, she was still left with the issue of a weak heart. This had to be fixed with increased exercise, which should help to strengthen her heart and allow it to be able to work correctly. Kelly really committed to this, and after being approved for weight loss surgery, she was able to drop around 350 pounds from her original 700 pound weight, which is a mammoth achievement. However, this was still too little too late. Kelly's final appearance before the cameras was her calling her old college professor, announcing she would be finally going back to school to finish her degree. But this would not happen, as in 2019, just two weeks after a final checkup with Dr. Now, she died of heart failure. A Reddit commenter shared their thoughts about how much they loved Kelly and talked about how she was a beautiful spirit who had dealt with so much throughout her life, which was a long way to show just how loved she was as a patient of Dr. Now. And the final patient to see Dr. Now was just as heartbreaking, which was Renee Byron in season 6. Renee weighed 631 pounds at the start of her episode and was actually a plus size model. Her life though was a constant battle with her weight, which had devastating effects on her health, mobility and overall quality of life. Her issues stem, yet again, from a tough childhood. She turned to food for comfort following a series of traumatic events. Growing up, she faced significant distress, particularly after her parents' divorce and the subsequent abuse she suffered at the hands of her stepfather. These early experiences set the stage for a lifetime of emotional eating and weight gain. The weight carried on piling on throughout her life, and she ended up suffering from massive swelling in her legs and feet, known as lymphedema, something a lot of the patients who see Dr. Now need to suffer through. When she finally met Dr. Now for a consultation, she was admitted to the emergency room straight away with breathing problems. This turned out not to be serious though, and the show carried on as normal, with her revealing her goal was to lose enough weight to qualify for weight loss surgery from Dr. Now. However, this would be a bumpy road, as she was diagnosed with a very rare disease known as Gilliam Barr syndrome, which causes lung blood clots, blood infections, and even cardiac arrest. Despite the challenges she faced, Renee did manage to lose 250 pounds and kept fans of the show updated through her Facebook page. However, very similar to the other patients, even though she lost a massive amount of weight, it still wasn't enough and she died at 51 years old in May of 2021. Although no cause of death was officially announced, people have suspected that her life was claimed by the Gilliam Barr syndrome and her life was cut short just a year after her show aired. This is the final part in the 600 pound life's death series on my channel and the upcoming videos will be a lot more positive so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them and click the videos on your screen now to ensure you've seen part one and two. And so highly recommend you go and follow Big Craig, 31,000 followers.